Hey guys! Today, I'm going to be treating my past younger self. In here, I have the first ever phone that I ever wanted when I was in elementary school. And I'm going to be destroying this childhood dream today on a brand new episode of Board Smashing Grocery Store Phones. Or will I even be able to? Hmm. What phone is in the package that I wanted when I was in the fifth grade? I'll give you a hint. This phone came out in 2010. The iPhone 4? That was probably every kid's dream phone at the time. Nope. I was a special kid. Let's unbox this and see. Don't worry. I don't think this phone will have any problems with the way that I unbox. Because it's the Casio GZ1 Ravine. Or is it pronounced G Zone? Let me look this up. Yeah, I think I'll stick with GZ1 for this review. The main feature of this phone was its ruggedness. It's drop resistant and water resistant, which impressed me enough to make this my dream phone at the time. An app store with over 300,000 apps at the time? No thank you. When I was younger, I always imagined that I would randomly end up in the wilderness somehow, and the phone that I had with me would mean life or death. Other phones would probably break too easily, but with the durability of the Casio GZ1 Ravine, I could use its tools to help me survive, or call for help. Or at least until the end of 2019 when Verizon shuts down the CDMA network which this phone uses. Can you still call 911 on a CDMA phone without a CDMA network? Putting aside its durability, would I have loved this phone for its features back then if I actually got it? Let's take a look through it to find out. Booting up. Such a classical piece. I would like to mention that I paid $55 for this thing brand new on eBay, when I probably could have bought a used one for $20. And this doesn't even feel like a brand new unit. No retail box, no manuals, and not even an original charger. Samsung, seriously? The only thing is some plastic covering the camera. Hmm. I didn't even get to put the battery in myself. Kind of tough to take out. <laughs> okay, there we go. Ooh, it supports micro SDs. We can just slip that in there. <clears throat> okay, I felt like I was gonna puncture it trying to get it back in. And lock it to protect it against moisture. Lighter than I expected. At first, I thought the battery wasn't installed. Heh, <laughs> brand new. Yeah, right. You can tell there's some chipping behind this glass. But maybe that's my fault. Initial programming required? I can't write code. Let's first try the camera. It says ready, but it's loading, so... Take a photo. What? That is not a shutter sound. Listen to it again. It sounds like that time when I slammed a Joy-Con on the floor. Just notice the trash can graphic is glitched. Ooh, it has a burst mode. Let's see what happens. I just hope it's just like a bunch of smashing sounds. Yep, I was right. The iPhone at the time didn't have this many features in the camera. Even has a flash. I wish current iPhone software would have this option. Only this shot. And this phone also has video. Options. Call interruption. Block or allow. Man, I wish the iPhone had that. And start a video. Hey guys, right now I'm doing a video on the GZ1. Or the G Zone, or the whatever, Jizz on whatever they call it. On whatever they call it. And when you're using the camera, this screen shows a camera icon, so you can't be a creep in public. Another feature of the screen, a lot of other flip phones had it, is that you can take selfies using this. Great resolution and color. 
<laughs> Can't get over that shutter sound. And I just realized there's some photos that are already loaded onto it. What is this? <gasps> the title describes it exactly. What? Ugh. What? Have you ever been so sick you're mummified? On a football field or something? Ugh. Ugh. Cool. I wonder why this mascot didn't catch on. Ooh, live photos. I remember that my mom's old Verizon flip phone had this photo. And I set it as the wallpaper because I was impressed that a wallpaper could move. Nice. Enough of the camera. What else does this phone have to offer? Apparently, a magical experience if you turn on the speakerphone. And that button, if you hold it down, it turns on the flashlight. Useful. Remember when iPhones didn't have a dedicated flashlight toggle? You had to download a third party app or turn it on in the video section of the camera app. Button with a microphone on it. No, I love that yeah, 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 yeah. What about this red button on the side? Ooh, a shortcut key. And with that, you can see this phone's huge list of features. Way more features than a flip phone needs. Just notice this clear key has a compass on it. What happens if you hold it down? Does it have Safari? GZ gear? Wow. Earth compass? Wait until recharge is complete. Can't use it without a full charge? To conserve energy, unplug charger from charger source. Yes, I need to be reminded to save a penny for like 10 years. Okay, if you unplug the charger, you can use the compass. And it works, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it's showing some landmarks in whatever direction I'm facing. Okay, we're done with that. Walking counter. Okay, bunch of health mumbo jumbo. Pedometer on. Okay, you have to close it to activate it. Oh, uh, it's not easily fooled. Okay, thank you. Go away. Let's try putting it in my pocket and walking for real. It's not counting for some reason. Thermometer? Ah. Have to unplug this almost every time you want to use one of these apps. And it looks like there's an actual thermometer built to this phone. It's not pulling any weather data. That's cool. i never seen a phone that actually has that. Tides? Atlantic Beach? Is this real-time data? Oh wait, it's just like previous data. You can choose the date and see data. Good for fishermen, I guess. Sunset sunrise. So it says the sun will set at 6.02 today. And on my Apple Watch, it says 5.57. Pretty accurate. I don't know if this is real-time data or just using previous data from previous years. Astro calendar. Uh-huh, ooh, really don't care. Stargazer, ooh, there's the Big Dipper, there's the snake, think that's a frog? What other features does it have? Looks like other things that all flip phones had at the time. And when you shut it down, there's a rave. Mm, 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 mm. So I'm importing the photos and videos, and when I plugged in the SD card, you can see how hip and cool Verizon was with the kids. They called the video file my flicks, and they called the picture file my pics. Man, for a flip phone in 2010, this has too many features, unlike flip phones today. But back then, if I had gotten this phone, I probably would have been bored with it. Because I guarantee my parents would have paid extra for all those cool internet features. I probably should have had this tough phone back then. Because when I was in middle school, I went through two normal flip phones. I was a problematic kid. I'm so glad I changed. So let's see if I can break this flip phone now. First up... The scratch test, with it closed. Mm. 
Looks like it didn't flip over once because the front is still immaculate. But the back, ooh. Camera's a little scratched too. Still good. But since this is supposed to be a tough phone, let's do it one more time. And this time we can start a video. And we can stop that recording. Still working, just a few scratches, and it looks like this speaker grill is grinded down a little bit. But my OCD is telling me I have to scratch up the front too, so... Kept on flipping to the back, but still works. The front is a little bit scratched. Next up, a drop test. But since this is a tough phone, not from four feet, from whatever height this is, backside closed. Three, two, one. Charge port opened up, but everything else looks fine to me. Next up, backside open. Let's do a video too. Three, two, one. Still recording, both flaps opened up. We're gonna save that video. Yeah, looks like it still works. Quarter drop, closed. Three, two, one. Close enough. <laughs> Quarter drop with video. Three, two, one. Yep, everything's still good. Front facing drop test closed. Three, two, one. Doing good. And finally, the front facing drop test open. Three, two, one. So after all of those drops, including a few extra ones, it's A-OK. -okay. So, you know what that means. A ludicrous drop test! But since this is a tough phone, I'm not gonna do it one time, not three times, but two times. I'm also going to turn on the flash so I can see it when it falls and don't get hit by it. Alright, closed. Three, two, one. That did not sound good. The shortcut button is popping out. Ugh. But it appears like... It's still fine. Okay, ludicrous drop test round two. This time open, and let's start a video. It will be a miracle if this saves. Three, two, one. Cover fell off. Stop the video. Save that. And if you can see, the phone is still working. But some permanent damage is the push to talk button is more screwed up, the volume button fell out, the voice command button also fell out, I don't know where that is, and the biggest oof is that the battery cover fell off even though it's in its lock position. And taking a look at the battery cover, if you can see up here, the tab that locks it into place broke off. But it can still snap back into place, all right, except it won't be locked ever again fully. Ooh, and I realized some of the keyboard was missing. But even with all these damages, you still gotta give this phone some credit. It's still fully working. But with all these damages, I don't think it's gonna appreciate the next test. For the final test, I kind of got my jeans dirty from filming all day. 
and it would be a shame if I left the phone in the pocket and it had to go through a wash. If it was undamaged, I'm pretty sure it can ace this water test easily. But the buttons were falling out after those drops, so I just took them out because I didn't want them falling out in the washing machine. So that's probably gonna be a compromise on the water resistance. Plus the hole in the keyboard, and the back cover no longer locking. For added realism, I'm gonna be washing the phone with this full basket of laundry. This is what happens when my parents make me do the chores. Okay, after the washing machine, looks like there's only a little bit of water inside this front display. The inside, no signs of water. Well, actually a little bit of water right there. Back cover, pretty dry in there. Let's do the smart thing and turn it on right away after it's been exposed to water. <laughs> oh, there it goes. No sound though. Screen kind of has some water damage. I'm gonna let this dry out overnight to see if it'll still work. Oh, the sun's back. I'll let this dry overnight to see if it'll still work in the morning. It's the next day. This phone still works even though there's a little bit of water damage inside the screens if you can see. But I doubt it will survive. The final test. I want to blend this while it's turned on, but I don't want to puncture the battery. Tape up the bottom with some duct tape so the battery can't go flying out. Sounds like a solid plan. Let's also turn on the flashlight. Here we go. The screen's still okay, but the blender doesn't sound so good. It's not letting the blade spin! So I can't get it open easily because it looks like this ring just detached and the phone's still fine. Just has a scar right there. Maybe that plastic ring was the thing that kept the blades from spinning. Let's try it again. I feel more bad for the blender than the phone. I see the screen shut off, but the flash is still on. Oh yeah, I see the reason why the screen turned off. The blender ate its way through, but this screen still works at least. Not this anymore. And once with it closed. Damn. Okay, we're gonna stop putting so much torture on my poor blender. So, the bottom is grinded away, but it still works. This thing survived the blender test. Desperate times calls for desperate measures. Go ahead, if I can survive a blender, I can survive anything. Impossible. How did you manage to break me? An indestructible piece of technology. You should have seen what I did to that tough book. Oh no. And that's the end of the Casio GZ1 Ravine. Before I go, I have one last message for all of you. It's pretty deep. When I was a kid, wanting a flip phone back then instead of an iPhone says a lot about today's society. We live in a society! Thank you guys for coming to my TED Talk. And thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. Society. VZ Navigator. VZ Navigator. A powerful and easy navigation. Battery is required. Sorry, I don't speak English.